So these right here are Ray-Ban Meta glasses, and this is gonna be my first impressions with them. Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you're doing all right. My name is Matt, and this is Dwyer Creatives, and today I wanna go over my first impressions on these glasses right here. Now, these are the Ray-Ban Metas. They are the Wayfarer frames with the great transition lenses. They did come out in about fall 2023. When they did come out, I was like, eh, I don't really think I'm gonna get them. Think that for my thought process at the time, they weren't really gonna fit in. Fast forward to about a month ago, I had a coworker talking about them. So I looked them up again and noticed that they did have a low bridge model that they were coming out with. And this interests me because as someone who is Asian, I have a lower bridge and a lot of glasses when you go round are all hybrids. So when they're sitting on your face, they don't really sit right. Now, something else they do is they have a little bit more of a cutoff here, so they're not sitting on your cheeks. Originally, I went online to the Ray-Ban website and then also to the Meta website. I tried to configure these glasses in the orientation that I wanted. And I knew that I wanted the gray transition lenses from all the reviews I've been reading. You wanna be able to use them outdoors, but also when you come in indoors, you don't wanna have to have sunglasses on. So that's where the transition part would help. Now, I did also go into a lens store and tried to talk to them there. They couldn't really help me out. I did come across an issue here for myself. When I was looking at them and trying to get them in the configuration I wanted, which was the low bridge model, which was the headliner with the gray transition lens. I can do that, but the only way for me to do that was to get a prescription lens that wasn't a prescription. And for myself, I found that aggravating because the lens prices did jump up in price. Now I was looking at three to $600, depending on your discount. That's compared to the headliners or the wayfarers with the high bridge, which offer a transition lens for only $80 more. Another thing that bothered me with this process was going into the stores that actually carried these glasses. They only carried these Wayfair frames. Back to the Ray-Ban website and going to the official vendors, I put in my area. I live a little bit north of Atlanta and within 50 miles, there's not a single store that had those frames for myself to be able to test those out. I think that's absolutely ridiculous, especially being Atlanta is a huge travel hub. Putting all that aside, I did order these Wayfarers straight from Ray-Ban. They took about a week to ship out, so a very short time. Or at least for me, I think that's a relatively short ship time. Now, I do want to ask though, hey Ray-Ban, if you're watching this or if anyone has any connections with those and can hook me up with a pair of the Load Bridge models, I'd love to be able to try those out. And I'll kind of go over a few reasons why a little bit later. For first impressions, as I unbox them, I'm just going to lay out a few specs for them. These are a 12 megapixel camera. It offers AI features along with speakers on the sides. These do up to 60 second videos or up to 30 minutes using Facebook Live or Instagram Live. And yes, you do have to have either a Facebook or Instagram account to be able to use these. Also, when you're shooting that video, it is only gonna be in vertical format. Right now, they don't offer a landscape formatting to that. I actually have a really quick question for y'all. Since there is a 60 second limit on the recording, is that long enough for you? Now for myself, I got this for short form content and a lot of that is going to be really short clips. So like maybe 10 seconds here, 20 seconds there and anything longer. I'm not really sure that I'd be using them for that. It would be nice to have a longer one, but for all of you, do you think that this would be a long enough to capture the moments that you're looking to capture? Now that I have these unboxed, the first thing that I personally notice is the weight of them. I know that a lot of people say that these weigh a lot, and in my opinion, I feel like they are on the heavier side, but they're not too heavy. Now, I say that because I've been wearing glasses for a very long time. I've been wearing them since I think like the first grade. And my vision is absolutely horrible. As you can see here, these are ultra compressed. And they still have a very thick lens. So my glasses have always been on the heavier side because of the lenses. Now saying that, comparing the Ray-Ban Metas to say my regular sunglasses, these are just a pair of knocking around sunglasses. These are super light and yeah, in comparison to the Ray-Ban Metas, these are a lot heavier. But for me, wearing the past few days, I don't find the weight too much. Now, as I mentioned, for my eyeglasses, I do have a prescription for these Meta Ray-Bans. I cannot get them in it. I'm about at double their limit. I think they're around four or five is their cutoff. So if your vision is pretty bad like mine, just know that you're not going to be able to get them in a prescription. Now getting all this set up, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and download the app and follow it through the process. You're going to be using your charging case. On the back, there's a little button here. You're going to use that to pair it 
to your phone. Now you can get this both on Android and Apple software. Go ahead, go to the Apple Store or the Play Store to be able to download it. And again, it will walk you through that process. I just wanna also say, hey, don't lose this case. This is the only way that you can charge these right now. Just make sure that you're really careful with those. Going back into it, they do offer a step-by-step -step process to run you through the gestures. Really quick breakdown of what's inside. For the glasses, you have a camera up here on your left. You have a LED indicator up here on your right. On the inside of the arm on the left, you have the on and off switch. And on the top of the right arm up front, you have your switch to either take photos or take videos. Now, originally it's set up that if you do one click, it'll take a photo. And if you do a long click, it will take a video, but you can switch that up in the app. Going back to that LED, it is pretty bright. And even if you turn it down to the lowest brightness, you'll still be able to notice it. So again, when you either take a photo or you take a video right there, as you saw, the LED will light up. During the day, I don't think it's as noticeable, especially if you're outside with a lot of bright light. But if you're in a low light area, especially at night, it will be noticeable. My wife and I went to a concert the other day and during there, I tried to take a few photos and a few videos. As I was doing that, she said, hey, I can definitely see that LED. I know it's doing something. So just take note of that. Again, we were at a concert. It was really dark. I did take some video footage and photos as you can see here. In the dark or low light, these are trash. I don't think they're usable. I don't think that if I went to another show that I would be using it for any sort of purpose because it needs a lot of light. Now on a moderately bright to brighter situation, say inside your vehicle, when you're driving around, I noticed that as I was taking videos, the inside would be about on par for exposure, but outside the vehicle would be pretty blown out. And I think you'll get mixed results depending on what type of light you have outside the vehicle. I also say here is where I kind of learned that you really need to think about your framing. And I say this because the way that the camera is oriented is it's going to go exactly where your head is looking, not exactly where your eyes are looking. You can be looking straight ahead with your head, but you can make your eyes look to your peripherals, to the right, to the left without changing your head. I'll use this for an example. As I was driving around one day, I noticed that there was a family of geese crossing the road. I went ahead and tried to take a video of this. So I started the video, I looked really quickly down, and then I looked ahead. Going back to the video, I saw that I kind of looked down, but what I was doing was I was turning my head a little bit, but using the peripheral of my eyes to look at that. So just note that when you're looking to the left or right, or if you're trying to get something breathed out, you need to make sure that your head is lined up for that. Driving around, I noticed that the stabilization is pretty good on this. It's something that I didn't notice any real shakes or anything. Then going to walking around, I noticed the same thing. We went on a quick walk the other day and just walking around, taking some footage, it did really well at stabilizing everything. Now this camera is on the lower end of specs for something that's coming out right now. This is comparing it to like my Pocket 3 that I'm currently filming on or any other of my film cameras. Most of them will shoot video up to 4K. This one only does 1080. That's gonna be 1440 by 1920 video. And for photos, it's gonna be about 3024 by 4032. And that is going to be in the vertical format. For myself, I haven't played too much with it in cropping it so that I can use it for horizontal footage. I think that this is something that they can maybe introduce in a future firmware update. I can hope for that, right? Going into the video again, as we're walking around outside, I got the best possible lighting that I can get. I notice that the footage in the photos, they tend to be slightly overexposed. You'll see some of the highlights and they're blown out there. Something I also noticed on a few of the photos that there was a slight color shift. Now, this one right here that I took, it's more of a darker green, but it shifted to like a yellow green. And that's just a few things I've noticed using it the past few days. So as we were walking around, something I did test out was for the music. And I just wanted to share this with you right now. What we're gonna do here is I'm gonna play a song here through my headphones. I'm gonna have this first right by my ear, and then I'm gonna put it roughly about at an arm's length away. And I'm gonna do this at 50% and then at 100%. So let's go ahead and do that, All right? So this is first gonna be at 50%, so right by my head. And now at an arm's width away. All right, now we're gonna turn it to 100%, right next to my head. And then about an arm's width away. Right there, you can observe that if you're in a quiet area and you have a lot of people around you, 
they're definitely going to be able to hear that and that's something that my wife noticed as soon as I took them out and started playing music on the first day I got them pulled them out started playing a song and then she was like hey I can hear that now if you're in a busier area and using it on the lower end I think that this will do really nicely Overall, I think that it produces pretty good sound. Now on the recording side, I think it does also a pretty good job for what it is. And I'll just play a short clip right here. You got Tom Brady, Sox, Celtics, Bruins. The other things that these Ray-Ban Metas can do is take phone calls. I've only done a few phone calls on them and everything went through smoothly. Didn't have any problems. I could hear the person I was talking to and they could hear me. So as of right now, I think that these do a really good job for that too. Now we're gonna move over to the app. It's pretty simple and this is where you're gonna be able to download your videos and photos. You'll see that here on the app, everything's gonna be in order. But when you get into your photos album, I noticed that for myself, they're not in chronological order, which I would prefer to have that. Hopefully they fix that in the future. Again, I would really prefer to have all my photos in order of the time that I took them. Here in the app, you're gonna see a few different basic things. You're gonna see how charged your glasses are and then how charged your case is. You're also gonna be able to go into your update section, either have it automatically or manual. Then you have your general section, this is where you'll find a little bit more data about your glasses, be able to unpair them, factory reset. The next is gestures. So here's where you can control your touchpad and then your capture button. If you wanna go ahead and switch the camera and video setting, you can do that here. Now the notifications for the LED brightness. This is where you change how bright that LED is. Again, as a whole for myself, I found that even on the low setting, it is still pretty bright. Talking about the Meta AI, I found it to be very, very basic and honestly something that as of right now, I don't think that I would use a whole lot. I would ask it basic questions like, hey, what's the weather here or the weather there and be able to answer that. I would ask it some technical questions like I asked it, you know, hey, what's the payload of that vehicle? And it would be able to answer that. Now for more complicated questions, I'd be like, hey, uh, how far am I from my house? It would say you needed to hook up to a map app. And the same thing for like music. I had a song playing, I was like, hey Meta, what song is playing? And it told me that I'd have to connect to a music player to be able to identify it. I also asked it a few language questions. I was like, hey Meta, how do you say hello in Korean? And it was like, hey, I can't answer that, but I did write it out. It could spell it out, but it couldn't speak it to you. And I think that kind of defeats that purpose of if you wanted to ask it, you know, how do I say this phrase? And it's not able to do that. And you have it there written out. It would be a lot better if that was able to be like, hey, how do I say hello in green? And it's like, oh, you say no say yo, right? Pretty simple, right? But I did notice that when I went to certain other languages, hey, how do I say hello in German? It did give me a response back for that though. So maybe it depends on the language. Now for the battery life, I've only done a few tests because I've only had this for a few days now. And I found out that today I actually ran it for the max amount of time, playing primarily all music during this time. And I took a few photos and videos, but not a whole lot. It lasted about three hours and 45 minutes before I had to put it back in the case. Then it took about a little over a half hour to recharge back to 100%. I think that this battery life is well worth noting. We are going to be taking a lot of photos and videos. It's definitely going to decrease from there. And you're going to have to keep charging it more often. If you are using this as your prescription glasses, you're not really going to have time to charge it. Or if you're someone like me, where if I got these as prescriptions, which I can't because my vision is so bad, I would have to take the glasses off and charge them in the case be able to charge them. So I'd wear them for like three hours and then have to charge them for a half hour. And that half hour, I'd be completely blind and useless. So just note that if you are considering prescriptions that you'll probably need to bring a backup pair of glasses if you need to charge these. So I do actually have a short list of a few things that I would like to see in a future firmware update. I just think that they would make it a little bit more enjoyable to be able to use these. Now I would like a longer record time. I think that would be a very good compromise to do longer videos without having to worry about your glasses overheating, especially in something as small as these. Now I would like to see maybe a exposure compensation like plus 0.5, 1, 1.5, and 2, and have that be both plus and minus. That's for me, maybe on my like photographer video side where I notice that it seems to be more on that overexpose where I would like it slightly lower. Not a huge deal, just something that maybe they can add through the app. The other thing would be to make another charging device besides the case. 
Maybe you don't always want to throw it in your case. Maybe at night you want something by your bed. You can just throw it on there to charge them. I don't know. I think that to make a slightly cheaper alternative, to have more sources to be able to charge them would be very beneficial. Another one for me, and maybe it's just me, is to be able to have this LED turned off or even at a lower setting. And for my purpose would be like behind the scenes content. I don't want to be too distracting when I'm trying to do different videos or photos. But also if I'm recording myself, I don't want that flashing then as I'm trying to capture behind the scenes of what I'm filming myself doing. I think that it could be distracting. I don't know. I, I think that could be done, but I understand like the whole privacy thing. If you are in public, there is no assumption of privacy, at least here in the US. I can see both sides, but I just wish you could be able to turn that off. Now, the last thing that I will mention as a slight want is to be able to hook it up to a Bluetooth remote and either be like one of those rings I've been seeing that you can use with TikTok, or maybe they make an app for your smartwatch, like an Apple watch that you can just go ahead and click that, just so you're not always reaching up here and you don't have to give it a verbal command. For me, to be able to have like a small little Bluetooth thing, say as I have my camera, my hands full, and I'm trying to shoot something and still not be loud myself, I don't want to give that verbal command. Be nice to be able to take like on my camera, put a little button and just click that and it'll record behind the scenes without being a huge hand movement there. I don't know, again, that's not a huge thing, but just something that I would like to see in the future. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this up here. I know this was kind of a long thing and I kind of like droned on a little bit. Hopefully you stayed here with me. I do want to say too though, that these do have a 30 day period where you can return them. This is the first advertisement that I see for them all the time saying that they have this 30 day period. If you're really not happy, return them. Over the next few weeks, I'm gonna be wearing these and trying them out and trying to figure out if I'm really gonna keep these. As a whole, uh, they are very easy to use. I think they produce really good quality for what you're using it for, which would be for short form content consumed on the phone. For pricing compared to other Ray-Ban sunglasses, if you get their stock models, these are pretty comparable to their sunglasses and you're only paying like a little bit more to get all these features. Now, I think that these are gonna be very helpful to capture kind of like behind the scenes or mini vlogs when you're going throughout the day, capturing those candid moments with not having to worry about dragging a huge camera around or even trying to get set up. You can just go ahead, snap it and move on. Last thing I do wanna say, because again, I mentioned this at the beginning, something I do really wanna mention here about the low bridge and why I originally was trying to get them and I honestly still would like to be able to find those to make that decision for these, whether I'm gonna keep these or not. Is earlier today, I wore them for about four hours straight. I noticed towards halfway through that the glasses would just slowly slide down on my nose. Not a huge deal. I still can see they still function as normally, but for me to have them more comfortable within my vision range, I like to have them a little bit higher but they kept doing this throughout the day and I think that's where these low bridge models would be a little bit more comfortable. I also noticed on these that I would get a slight hot spotting right here and then also up here. So again, I wonder if that low bridge model would fit my face better because I do have a low bridge. There you go, my first impressions of these Ray-Ban Metas. If you have any questions or comments on them, drop those in the comment section below. I try to always answer and respond to every comment that I get. And yeah, that's going to be it. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.